All right, the regular season is now over. We have the circle of life in the 919. <laughs> Duke beat NC State. Uh, North Carolina beat Duke. And now NC State has beaten North Carolina. And Pat, this was the best offensive output for NC State of this season. As disappointed as you are in UNC in this game, you have to give all the credit in the world Ooh, to yes. NC State. I mean, at one point in the season, Chris, they're four and three. And then they go through the whole MJ Morris is your starter. Then <laughs> he's, he's not, not your starter. <laughs> and then you're not sure, even sure if he's going to stay with your program. And right. Brennan Armstrong resurrected to finish this season, culminating in this incredible performance in this game. I mean, we talked about the output he had when we played. For Virginia versus UNC yeah. for 500 yards, equally as impressive tonight. Absolutely, and all, one of the things that's impressive about it is he was playing through injury. You saw many times during his game, he didn't take off and run like he probably would have in other games. He got hit in their last game against Virginia Tech, nursing a little bit of a rib injury. He said this is coming back from an injury he had a couple of years ago with NC State, uh, with against Virginia, excuse me. Uh, he told us that after the game. And so he protected himself a little bit more in his game, still able to have his best game of the season and help lead NC State to their best game of the season. And he's not doing it alone because NC State has himself a player, dare I say maybe a future Heisman candidate. Man, Casey probably. Concepcion. <laughs> you guys already knew the guy before, but now I think the whole country does. But I'm on the sidelines, Chris. Emeka Mezzi is down there, the hero mm. from two years ago. Torrey Holt is down there. I'm like, Torrey, you got to tell me what you think <laughs> about KC Concepcion. He's like, man, incredible player. I mean, it, it leaves you speechless what he's yes. doing out there, but credit to the coaching staff and new offensive corner Robert and I, who they never could seem to get things clicking in gear early yeah. on in the season. Then he just figured out, oh, yeah, let's just keep it simple. Brandon Armstrong runs the ball, and yeah. we're going to give it to Concepcion every way possible. UNC could not stop him. And the thing you didn't mention is he's a true freshman yeah. doing this. Led the team in rushing yards, also led the team in receiving yards versus North Carolina. And after the game, Dave Dorn addressed the elephant in the room, <laughs> right? Uh, we know that SEC teams have tried to go after Drake May with NIL money. So, of course, other teams are probably going to come after Casey Concepcion with NIL money. So he said, hey, all the Wolfpack Nation out there, we need... 1,000 people, 5,000 people to donate $1,000 each so we can help keep these players but also attract other players from the transfer portal. That's going to be a real thing, and that's one of those things, those things we're going to have to look out for starting on Monday when the portal is going to be close to opening up. Well, one of the themes for NC State and Dave Dorn is that they've gotten the most out of their talent. That's yes. been exhibited really in this rivalry. I mean, last year, yes. Ben Finley is your quarterback out there going up against – Drake Main, who wins the game? In NC Philly. State yeah. in Chapel Hill. Yeah. And that's the problem for UNC. They've had these really talented teams. I mean, Chris, just, just think about this. They had Sam Howell, yes. who is a starter for the Washington Commanders. Now they're going to have Drake May, who's going to be a top, a top two ten pick, pick in yeah. NFL draft. There's not a lot of programs that even have one starting NFL quarterback, short of maybe your Alabamas, your Oklahomas, Ohio State's, USC. And then it's going to be UNC. Yeah. They have squandered an incredible talent at the most important position in the game. I can't help myself but be disappointed that they could have done more. And I asked Mac Brown after the game, like, what is the common thread between your team finishing last season 0-5, 2-4 to end this season, and then in the little moments within games themselves, yes. never seeming to have the resolve to get over the hump despite all the talent? He didn't have an answer. He pointed back to things he's, he's reiterated before. Hey, we're – we're going for a nine-win season. I think that's pretty good, and that felt a little bit empty to me at the time. They had a collapse at the end of the year last year, losing their last four. If you take it back to after they beat Miami, mm -hmm. this team really started to sputter after that. They lose to Virginia. You lose another one after that. You beat Campbell, you should, yeah. and you beat Duke on their third-string quarterback in two overtimes, right? And Duke has all the excuses in the world to not win that game. And then after that, you lose two more games for North Carolina. So, again, another season where they're sputtering at the end. Again, as you said, having all the talent in the world, you just don't know what is that issue. But also, hats off to Dave Dorn and his crew. Yeah. It really shows the coaching job because at the beginning of the season, this team could barely move the ball unless it was Brennan Armstrong using his legs. They weren't moving it through the air. They weren't moving it with their running backs. Uh, Brennan Armstrong was really the offense in the first five games of the season. 
And now you have this game where they get over 500 yards. Uh, Dave Doran told us after the game, he stripped down the inefficiencies. He looked at the most efficient plays they had and who are their best playmakers. And they literally just focused on that. And you saw Robert and I's offense really come to life for this team in this game. So now we go to our next steps here. Yeah. And we talk about this is the ultimate example of not how you start, but how you finish. Absolutely. And UNC came into the year with all the hype, the playoff expectations, ACC title kind of talk, and they're the ones that limp to the finish. NC State is the one that finishes strong. And they're going to have people coming for their coaching staff because no. of them going so strong. Oh, yeah. Tony Gibson already in some sort of rumors. Meanwhile, UNC might be looking for different staff because of their poor performance. And Mac Brown was addressing that after the game, asked him, does he plan to make any staff changes? Yeah. And he wasn't going to talk about that immediately then. He said what he said every year, he's going to sit down, meet with different people. Yeah. It's hard to imagine that Gene Chizik survives this. Last year was bad enough. Things didn't get better. That's one of those head scratchers, too, because I remember when we covered UNC's first game of the season versus South Carolina, we went to Charlotte together, mm -hmm. and we talked about on the car ride home, man, UNC looked really good on yeah. defense. They have really turned it around. And literally, it just started getting worse and worse and worse after that. Um, that is a head scratcher. You would think there probably will be some type of a change after that. And, you know, we'll see what happens with Carolina. But, again, hats off to NC State with what they've done. Uh, hats off to Carolina for how they started the season. Now their challenge is not only just starting the season strong, ending the season strong. They haven't done that the last couple of years. Yeah, and it's probably going to begin with the bowl game, which is ultimately going to be look more like a spring game, I think, for Carolina. I imagine yeah. where they limp to the finish line yeah. here, you're going to get a trickle in of, of guys skipping the bowl game. And even if they play in the bowl game, it might be a repeat of the, the Mayo Bowl from two years ago where they played in it, but they didn't play in yeah. it. And Drake May, noncommittal after this one, understandably. He's a, he's a classic kid. You know, you know he wants to play in the bowl game, which he has said. Yes. But that's going to be difficult to do when you're going to be potentially number one or number two pick and you're going to a game that doesn't have a lot of consequence. And Carolina, as a program, needs to decide if Connor Harrell is the guy or they need to go to the transfer portal. But on the other side of things, I imagine NC State is going to this bowl game strong. Under Dave Doran, they performed well in them. I think, yeah. you know, I wouldn't be surprised if all their big guns play. You know, guys like Peyton Wilson and – and Brandon Armstrong, these guys want to finish their career right. Tell of two programs, right? Mm -hmm. it, it feels like NC State's guys always want to finish the season together. Uh, Peyton Wilson said after the game, you know, they got rid of the cancers in the locker room, and now the, all the locker room has completely bought in. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what happens. North Carolina always seems to have a mass exodus after that last regular season game, and they go into the bowl game with not a lot of uh, their firepower that they came into the bowl game with. So we'll see what happens, yeah. but uh, interesting game right here. NC State wins their third straight against North Carolina, uh, winning 39-20 to right here at Carter-Finley Stadium.